Dear Democrats, Happy International Women's Day to all. Thank you, John Burton, for your brilliant leadership of the California Democratic Party. Let's acknowledge John Burton's greatness. Thank you to all of the delegates who are here, especially our new and young delegates who are here for the first time. Let's welcome them. And thank you, Mayor Garcetti, for welcoming us to the City of Angels, demonstrated so beautifully in the film, spoken about from the point of values in your great remarks. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti. And in the theme of this convention, renewing California by advancing our values, the theme for this convention is classic California, optimistic, entrepreneurial, and innovative. Innovative, founded in our values of fairness, justice, equality, and opportunity for all. Acting upon our values, as you saw in the film, and wasn't it a wonderful film narrated by John Lewis? Acting upon our values, Democrats have always worked for an economy that works for everyone. Five years ago, President Obama called for bold, swift action now to bring our economy back from the brink. A Democratic Congress answered with the Recovery Act to invest in jobs, infrastructure, clean energy, and strengthen the middle class. Now our businesses have created over 8 million jobs, new jobs, and our economy is back on track, but we are not finished yet. We have work to do. Acting upon our values of equality and fairness, a Democratic Congress and the President made the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act the first bill that President Obama signed into law. We discarded Don't Ask, Don't Tell into the dustbin of history, ensuring that Americans in uniform can serve the country they love, no matter whom they love, but we are not finished yet. And by the way, let's hear it for our men and women in uniform who serve us so well, many of whom are here today. Thank you. With a Democratic Congress and a Democratic President, we strengthened the middle class by establishing the stronger, strongest consumer protections in history. We ensured that the recklessness of some on Wall Street never again causes joblessness, joblessness for many on Main Street. But we are not finished yet. We acted upon the belief that health care is a right for all, not just for the privileged few. For a century, many tried. With a Democratic President and a Democratic Congress, we succeeded, and the Affordable Care Act became the law of the land. And because of the Affordable Care Act, millions in our country and in California are gaining affordable quality insurance, health insurance for the first time. Four million in the exchanges, 3.1 million young adults, and millions more through Medicaid, and the list and the numbers grow. The young pe for young people 18 to 26 years old, no lifetime li or annual limits for anyone, no exclusion on the basis of pre-existing medical condition, and no longer will being a woman be a pre-existing medical condition. This is what some, some of what Democrats have received, have achieved recently, and these achievements are what Republicans want to reverse. Let me give you one example of what their priorities are. With the need to raise the minimum wage, and with two million people and counting losing their unemployment insurance, I asked a Republican friend why his party remained so opposed to extending the vital lifelines for struggling families and really hungry children. This colleague's response was telling in its blunt nature, and it's stunning in its honesty. What he said was, to the Republican caucus, these people you're talking about are invisible, and the Republican caucus is indifferent to them. Invisible and indifferent. This is just plain wrong. That is not the leadership the American people deserve, and it is up to us to demonstrate clearly 
how Democrats are different, that no American is invisible to us, and we will never be indifferent to their needs. We know and care about the needs of the American people. If House Republicans refuse to listen, refuse to see the challenges facing all Americans, then it's up to us to retake the House of Representatives for all of the American people. If Congress won't change, then it's up to us to change Congress. And when we do, Democrats will be ready with an agenda to close the opportunity gap and build an economy that works for everyone. Let me be clear, this is an agenda that could be enacted today, right now, if Republicans would only give us a vote. Right now, the votes are there to give America a raise. We could raise the minimum wage with Congressman George Miller's Fair Minimum Wage Act. The votes are there. And aren't we proud of George Miller's leadership in the Congress for 40 years? Aren't we proud of George Miller? Thank you, George Miller. Right now, the votes are there to extend unemployment insurance for the two million families that rely on it to stay afloat. Right now, the votes are there to tear down barriers of discrimination in the workplace and pass ENDA in the House which has passed in a bipartisan way already in the Senate. Give us a vote on ending discrimination in the workplace. Right now, the votes are there to enact comprehensive immigration reform. American values reject denying citizenship to immigrants or giving second-class citizenship to anyone. Give us a vote on comprehensive immigration reform and to stop deportations that split our families. And it is time to honor our generational responsibility to preserve our planet, God's great creation, by addressing the climate crisis. Thank you, John Burton, for your leadership in California on this subject. Your leader a leader in the legislature as President Pro Tem on protecting our planet. And thank you, Tom Steyer, for protecting John's leadership from big oil. Our leader in Congress, our leader in Congress to confront climate change is Congressman Henry Waxman. And we are very proud of his extraordinary. Let's hear it for Henry Waxman and then 40 years of leadership in the Congress. We have had some extraordinary personalities to get the job done. It's time to take up the democratic economic agenda for women and working families. When women succeed, America succeeds. It is based on three pillars. We must make fair pay the standard in the American workforce, pass an increase in the minimum wage, and the Paycheck Fairness Act. Women making only 70 cents on the dollar for every dollar a man makes means that for the first three months of the year, pretty soon the end of March, the first three months of the year, a woman will be working free compared to her male counterpart with the same education, same experience, same job a qualification. That's just wrong. And think of what that means to that woman's family. We must secure work and life balance for women by following California's lead and enacting paid family and medical leave in our entire country. And we must ensure affordable, quality child care for all working parents. If we do those three things, we will unleash the power of women. And when women succeed, America succeeds. OK, let's do that again. When women succeed, America succeeds. To build an economy who works for everyone, we must create jobs. And frankly, it's as simple as ABC. America, make it in America. Stop tax breaks for uh, companies that send jobs overseas. Have tax breaks, tax breaks for jobs created here. Build A, American made. B, build the infrastructure of America. C, collective bargaining. This is essential. 
This is essential to workplace fairness and building the middle class. We must stop their efforts to weaken collective bargaining, A, B, C. To make our agenda a reality, Democrats must act now to restore confidence in our democracy. Walter Ruther once said, you cannot separate the bread box and the ballot box. We must not have a political and economic system that has been rigged in favor of special interest and against the people's interest and the middle class. Too often, people feel their voices aren't heard and their votes don't matter. And the misguided Citizens United decision only made matters worse. For us, the answer is clear. It's a dare. D-A-R-E. Let's disclose all the secret donors who are seeking control of our government and our campaigns. Let's amend the Constitution to overturn Citizens United. Let's reform the system to strengthen small donors and energize the grassroots. Let's empower voters by ending su voter suppression, by renewing the Voters' Rights Act, and by electing men and women who will shift the leverage back to working families. I guarantee you this. I guarantee you this. If we reduce the role of money in politics and increase the level of civility in our democracy, we will elect more women, more young people, and more minorities to office. And that will be very wholesome. If we act on our dare, dare, we will uphold the vision of our founders in support of a democracy, a government of the many, not the government of the money. California Democrats, it is our job to renew California by advancing our values, as your theme suggests, and to renew our America by acting upon our beliefs. This is our task together, to renew California and our country. For our children, our families, and our veterans, when we meet this charge, we will reignite the American dream and build ladders of opportunity for, for all. But we have work to do. This is our mission in 2014, to embrace the promise of an economy that works for everyone, to elect a Democratic majority in Congress, and, and re-electing in these difficult races, Ami Barra, Julia Brownlee, Lois Capps, Scott Peters, and Roal Ruiz. Thank you for sending them. We need to send them back. To re-elect our great Governor Jerry Brown. John, when Jerry Brown was governor, I was chair of the party all those many years ago. Jerry Brown, Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, Attorney General Kamala Harris, aren't we proud of all of them, and all of our statewide Democrats. Thank you, John Burton and the California Democrats for your spirit and your leadership. God bless you all. God bless our men and women in uniform. God bless California. God bless the United States of America. Onward to victory. Thank you all very much.